As question 6 asks about the length of the distance between the endpoints of a line segment, we can calculate this distance using a user defined function that, that applies the distance formula. To do so, we need to know a little bit about the function. In particular, we need to know that sine of 2 times pi over 4, which is sine of pi over 2 equals 1, and sine of 2 times 3 pi over 4 is sine of 3 pi over 2, which is minus 1. With these values, we can use our distance formula. The user-defined function is called distance, or dist. I'm going to enter our first coordinates. Our y coordinate and our second coordinates. So our user-defined function gives us the distance between the two points, in other words, the length of the line segment. Our answer is actually the square of the length of the line segment, so we can see that the answer must be A. Question 7. The probability that two students chosen at random have the same number of pets can be calculated as follows. This is the probability that two students chosen at random will have no pets, plus the probability that the two students will have both have one pet, plus the probability that two students will both have two pets, and the probability that they will both have three pets. If we convert this number to a decimal, we see that our answer is C. In question 8, it appears that the function concerned is a trigonometric one. It also appears that the period of this function is 14. The value 2 pi over 14, being pi over 7, means that we can concern ourselves with answers A and B. These answers are quite similar. They both have our 5 corresponding to a principal axis of 5. However, they differ in terms of the sine of the cos, cos term, and as our curve resembles a cosine curve reflected, our answer is going to be B. In question 9, we can start with the derivative fact that's been given, and use that to write the integral of kx plus 1 by e to the kx is equal to x e to the kx plus c. Now, the integral on the left hand side can be split into two parts by expanding the brackets. And if we move the second part corresponding to the integral of e to the kx, if we move that part to the right of the equation, then we're getting closer to the integral required. In fact, this only differs from what we have here by the k. So if we take that out as a common factor, and in fact multiply through by 1 on k, we have the integral of x e to the kx which corresponds to the answer D. If the required integral was found on the class pad, in other words, if we ask for the integral x e to the kx,
the answer given by the class pad does not resemble any of the answers provided in the multiple choice question. However, it is still informative. We can see there is a subtraction in the class pad's answer. There is also a subtraction in two of our multiple choice answers. There's one in D and one in E. So, looking more closely at these two possibilities, initially it seems that E resembles the class pad's answer. Both um, expressions have a denominator of k squared. However, the numerator differs. In the class pad's answer, there is a coefficient of k in the first term. There is no such coefficient of k in the first term of answer E. This means answer E cannot be correct. And so D, whilst looking a bit different to the answer provided by the class pad, must be the answer required. The curve in question 10 is parabolic and looks something like this. It has a y-intercept of minus 5 and x-intercepts of plus or minus square root 5. That means the line joining the y-intercept to the positive x-intercept has a gradient of m equals 5 over square root 5. Now the tangent parallel to this line has gradient given by 2x, the derivative of the function, and we solve this equals to 5 over square root 5. If we simplify the right hand side and divide through by 2, we get x equals root 5 over 2, which is our answer D. Some of this can be done on the class pad. We can solve our equation. giving us our answer of root 5 over 2.